So I'm chasing the noise with this car. This 2011 Honda Pilot with a 3.5 VCM Nightmare, all that good jazz. Yeah. So pretty much when I got this car, I got it for a really low price. In fact, if I had to put an engine in this car, I could still flip it and get my money back and still have a good profit on it. One of the reasons why I bought it. Uh, it had a lot of noise coming from it. Of course, we went through the usual suspects and changed the timing belt tensioner, which are notorious for going bad on these cars. Then from there, the noise kept on coming and the noise was focused on the top end of the engine, more so the front cylinder head. So I went ahead, did the rocker shaft retorquing, which is uh, one of the solutions from Honda. They have a TSB on that and I have a separate video talking about that. And I also went ahead and did the valve adjustment for the front and rear, so we did that. The noise got slightly better, but still making that ticking noise that's driving me crazy. So the other day, we're driving this car, and I gotta say, the car runs perfect. It doesn't burn oil, I've already done the VCM muzzler on it, and it runs perfect. It just has that ticking noise that's driving me crazy. So um, the other day I'm driving it, I pull it into the garage, when I pull it into the garage, the ticking noise is gone. That's right, it's gone. I'm like, that is very interesting. The engine sounds quiet, perfect, which, like I said, it's a good running motor. I mean, no hesitation, great compression. We've gone through all that stuff, tune up everything. So I'm like, hmm, the noise is interesting, which kind of sparked what I'm doing in this video. So after that, the noise was gone for a couple of days, and then it came back. Very interesting. Double check the time belt tensioner. That's still pretty good, checked everything. Everything's still as supposed to be, but it's still coming from the front cylinder head. Well, noise goes away again. A couple days later, it comes back, which is very interesting. So typically when you have a noise like that, um, could be a mechanical failure, and you might require changing a part. Well, considering that the noise has gone away and come back, it's got me kind of curious as if, do I have an oil pressure issue, or do I have an oil flow issue, or something clogged up? So now on these Hondas, the VCM valve, which is right over here well not the vcm but the vvt solenoids right over here they have a gasket those got to be they have a gasket that has a little filter on it and those do get clogged so we're definitely gonna be looking into that in this video but not to mention that it made me wonder how's the oil pump sump so now when i did the job on this this thing has a lot of carbon and a lot of junk and of course the front cylinder head because of the whole vcm system is worse for wear compared to the back so it got me wondering How's the oil pickup looking? Well, fortunately and unfortunately, the oil pan on this vehicle is leaking. So let's get down here and show you. I've already jacked it up and I've already drained most of the oil. So we should be over there, but you know, I got a leak over here, got a leak over here. So now looking at this leak right over here, one might think that the rear main seal is leaking, but when you take off this cover right over here, this inspection plate, the catalytic, uh, not catalytic converter, the torque converter and everything inside there is dry as a bone. And then when I got to looking on the back side, which you'll see it later, but behind the oil pan, it is all wet. Now, something I do keep, uh, keep in mind, if you're chasing a leak underneath your engine, always stop for the top, start from the top. I've already changed the valve covers, all that stuff up there. So I know the top is dry. So yeah not to mention i got a leak coming from the back over here so i've already concerned i've already confirmed just looking at the um crevices where the rtv because they use honda bond for this meets the block that yeah i do have a leak and it's more so towards the back so so now to take out this oil pan what you pretty much need to do is the exhaust has to come out you have your bolts over here and we'll talk about that and we'll use some fire just to kind of loosen them up make sure they come out pretty easy hopefully we can reuse the gaskets on it and then also there's a little I guess like a cool crossbeam support bracket. This needs to come out. We'll take that out. There's three bolts over there. I'll show you along the way. And once we do that, we should be able to get to all the bolts, drop this thing out, and then inspect it. So let's get to work. All right, so I'm going to start with the exhaust first, and we're going to go take a look at the front one, which is right over here. Let's see what size those bolts are. All right, so now these should be 14, but let's see if we get you in there. These should be a 14, but somebody's already gone in and 
uh, been here before for whatever reason. Maybe this had a bad cat at one time. Not too sure. So now what I typically like to do is use some fire, heat up these bolts, makes them a lot easier to come out. I don't want them to break because if they break, then I have to wait and get more bolts. So hopefully the fire will loosen that up. All right, fire for the wind, so those are out. So now we're gonna go to the back over here. And these have, let's see if I get my light in there. These have three bolts. These are all 14s. They don't appear that they've been tampered with, so hopefully these come out as nice as the other one did. So let's go ahead and get started on these. So not gonna film this, but pretty much the same thing. All right. All bolts are out. Man, bad lighting down here. All bolts are out on the front. Bolts in the back came out pretty easy. Now, I live in the southern environment, so these weren't terribly rusted in. So, yeah, just take that with a grain of salt. But fire, use an impact to shock it lightly back and forth, forward, reverse, and then you should be able to take them out pretty decent. So, this is the worst part now that it's over now we need to take off this little cross member that comes right over here uh probably these are 14s maybe 16s i don't know probably 14s so i'm gonna take these one two three four out and then uh we should be able to drop this out i'm not sure if i need to take off the whole pipe we'll play it by ear maybe it'll just be enough to slide out but maybe not so all right let me go ahead and loosen these out That was close. All right, so we got all types of room for activity and stuff. This is ready to slide out, but I don't think it's gonna give me the clearance. And I just wanna make this a lot easier. So what I'm gonna actually do is take out those bolts in the back right over there. Uh, towards the uh, pipe. I think that's the resonator. Actually, I think that is another catalytic converter, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm going to take out those three bolts, three right over there. Those should come out easy because they look like they've been out before. And then I should be able to drop this out, slide this out of the way, and start focusing on the oil pan. All right, so now we got plenty of room for the oil pan. So these are 10 millimeters. The inspection cover has to come off. I think this is a sensor over here, which might be leaking. We'll have to look into that. But like I was talking earlier, if you look, I mean, all the wetness is like right over here. So it's a good chance that seam is just not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I'm gonna get the tens. I believe these are 17s. Seventeens. 
yep, those are 17. So 17s for the pan to the transmission, 10 for everything else. And then we should be able to hopefully drop this without too much of an issue. It's a lot of oil in there. There you go. So pretty much pull back on the tab over here and just use a screwdriver to kind of wiggle it out. And that comes out easy. Now we can just slide this up here. Oops. That's fine. Now what I want to do is go ahead and take out the 17s. And go ahead and loosen them. There's one up here. Should be only four. one right up here towards the front So inspection cover over here, there's two tens. Now this is why I don't believe the rear main seal is leaking. Because if you look, this is all dry over here. The only thing that's getting wet is just kind of wherever the oil would leak and flow from. So it's wet down here, but if you put your finger in there, it's dry. And then also, the torque converter and the flywheel are also dry. So that's why, hopefully, I'm believing that the rear main seal is fine. We know the oil pan is leaking. So hopefully this should take care of most of the issue. If not, then we're in trouble because to change the rear mirror and seal, you got to take out the transmission. And that's not quite easy in this car. All right, so all the bolts are loose and this thing's ready to go. So now what I went ahead and did is I actually kept like two bolts on each side, one on this side, one side, and they're loose. That way, when I smack this thing out, it's not going to fall on my face. Hopefully not. That would kind of suck. So I'm going to take a just rubber mallet and start tapping. That way. I don't have to worry about this thing falling on me. But also the rubber mallet doesn't damage the pan. All right, so she came out. Um, tell you what, that Honda Bond is some uh, pretty, pretty, pretty sticky stuff over there. I mean, this thing did not want to budge. So a little pry bar action, nice and easy. The biggest advice I could give is just keep two bolts in there. That way you don't have to worry about this thing falling in your face or making a huge mess. And I left the oil draining overnight. So um, the biggest thing I'm looking at is right over here. And I'm gonna have to take it out. This is the uh, pick up the oil pickup. So I'm gonna take that out. It's two bolts and I might have to get a gasket for it That's gonna be great But at least if I could get that out clean it out real good 
and just make sure that there's no obstruction in there. Um, as far as anything else, I'm looking real interested is right over here. And I like what I see. I don't know how well the camera does it, but I'm not seeing oil from right over there. Where I am seeing the oil come out from was the seam right over here. And it actually looks like somebody resealed this at one point and they didn't do a good job because I have this dark stuff over here. This is lighter stuff, so. But I can see where the oil was leaking right over here, which is perfect. And the same thing all around over there. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, we'll take a look at the pan. We're gonna clean it up real good, clean this all real nice, put some fresh, um, well, I don't have Honda Bond. I'm actually gonna use the Ultra Black RTV. I've used that before for Hondas. Never had an issue with it, so. Don't see why I shouldn't have an issue with it now. So let me switch angles real quick. All right, so at the oil pan over here, um, this thing actually doesn't look too bad considering, I mean, for the most part, I mean, all this stuff is just a Honda Bond that I kind of been picking off on it. But I mean, I've had them cleaner with higher mileage. So this tells me at one point they weren't doing the oil as religiously as they should have. I know Hondas have that Honda has that percentage thing that tells you when to do it. Uh, I religiously stick to synthetic. That's my preference. And I do my oil every 5,000 miles. And I have a truck right now and it has 160,000 miles and it looks brand spanking new. So that's just my two cents on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, dump out the rest of this little bit of oil, clean this thing up and make it look brand new. And then we should work on the fun part of sealing this off. Now, as far as cleaning this, uh, you could take a razor blade, which I use nice and easy because this is aluminum, you can gouge it and just kind of get off the high parts over here. And then I usually take a green scotch pad, uh, scuff this up pretty good. And that works really good. And we'll do the same thing for the engine block. And we'll come back when I start taking off the pickup screen. I am going to take it out and take a look at it. Also, I did take the sensor out. I think this is like a crank sensor, if I'm not mistaken, because this is magnetic over here. Um, it does have an O-ring. This one doesn't feel too bad. So... Oh, there it goes. This is the crank sensor right over here. It does have an O-ring. It's still swole, so we should be good. It doesn't feel, it is kind of hard. Yeah, it is kind of hard. So what I might end up doing is just putting a little dab of RTV uh, to make sure it doesn't leak. If it does leak, this is right in the bottom. This is pretty easy to do, so it's not the end of the world. But yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. So just be careful with this. If this breaks, you're gonna have to go Honda OEM. Don't go aftermarket with this stuff right over here. So I'm gonna put this away. So um, we'll be back. This is some engine cleaner and degreaser I have lying around. So I'm just gonna spray it in here and hopefully that will kind of break up some of this. I wanna clean this pan up pretty good and just while you're here, right? <coughs> it is citrus and it is very strong. And then what I'll do is I'll take like a toothbrush and kind of agitate it a little bit. I'll let it soak. And then we'll clean it accordingly. The biggest area you want to clean is over here because that's where oil sits and I got some aged caked up oil. Next thing I'm going to do because I'm here, it's good practice. It's not, I mean, whether you decide to do it, it's up to you. I'm actually gonna take off the screen, um, clean it out real good. I'm probably gonna have to get a gasket, which that's fine. We'll just go to the dealership and get one. So two 10 millimeter bolts, one over here, and you got two right over here. So let me get this out. I recommend putting an oil pan 
to catch this, an oil drain pan to catch this, because usually when you take these things out, they just like to drip all over the place. Oh, that was loose, so maybe somebody took this off. Let's see the other ones. That's loose. That's loose. That's nice. I love when things are loose. Just makes you wonder. One, three. All right. Now let's go ahead and move this back here. All right. And let's see if you want to come out. Which you did. Nice. And there is an opening there. And I'll show you guys just in one sec. Now there is some crap in here. I don't know how well the light shows it. It's probably gonna die. Yeah, the camera won't really show it. So there is some stuff in here. It's not terrible. Um, pretty much you're just looking for a plugged up screen, but this one's not bad, nothing that affect operation. Uh, the way I clean these, um, I just hose them off and just keep hosing it off and that usually works pretty good. So let me go hose this off. A lot of work done off camera. Cleaned this up pretty good. Got it. I mean, you don't have to make it this perfect. I mean, the real thing that you want to try to go for is really cleaning this area over here where the pickup kind of sits. You just want to make sure that you're not sucking it in. I had a lot of caked and dried up oil over here. And the same thing with over here, a lot of caked up oil. I just went ahead and just kind of did the whole overachiever thing just because, well, why not? This sensor, looking back, I probably should have installed this like once I put the pan in there. Um, I already put a little dab of RTV just to kind of help the seal seal a little better. So hopefully this is not an issue and I don't break it. Um, we'll see. If I start bumping into this, then we'll take it out, hopefully. Oil drain plug. I went ahead and I torqued it down. I believe it was 29 foot-pounds, in case anybody was uh, wondering about that. And I just went ahead and put a magnetic one over here. I've always used them. I like them. Kind of gives you an idea of where your engine is at. Uh, I used it for the last oil change and had a little bit of stuff, but nothing to go home about. This was actually not terrible. It wasn't that good either in the sense that when I went flushing it out, a lot of carbon and crap came out of it. Um, also some RTV. So when you do the RTV on this, just make sure you don't go too crazy on it. But cleaned it out, let it soak, blew it out. So this should be a lot better and a lot cleaner oil in there. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to install this on the car get this mounted up. It has kind of a press seal gasket inside the engine. Actually, let me go ahead and show you guys. So, uh, where's the light? Let's get this light off. There we go. So it kind of has that type of weird seal. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look messed up or anything like that. So I'm good with reusing it. Uh, I'm sure you could probably get it at the dealer. I mean, it looks like a gasket, but I'm not going to mess with it. If anything, what you can do if you're worried about it, just put a small dab of RTV around it. I mean, very, very small, just to kind of help it seal a little bit. It won't hurt it. So we're going to mount that in. Those are the one, two, three, ten millimeter bolts. I went ahead and cleaned the surface. This thing looks fantastic, a lot better. I found a burr over here that I was able to bring down and make it smoother. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm actually going to make sure that the RTV goes all the way to the edge right around over here and put a dab at this corner and this corner right over here. And that should kind of help it seal a lot better. Like I said, I think the biggest issue with this um, oil pan installation was whoever did it before just did a poor job cleaning it. Preparations, everything, and we're going to make sure we have that. So let's go ahead and let's start getting this stuff on. All right, so this is ready to go. This has been cleaned up pretty good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put RTV on it. Now, I know they say Honda Bond is the way to go. Um, I've used this Permatex Ultra Black. I've read that it's the same thing as Honda Bond in a nutshell. I've used it for years as gaskets and I've never had an issue. Um, my thing is, let it dry and make sure that you clean your surfaces pretty good and you should have an issue with it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start sealing this thing up.
All right, well, I forgot to put push the record button, so I didn't get to film putting this in. And it was a little tricky. It just had to slide in, make sure, and I forgot to notate. It wasn't a big deal, but we were able to go back. Make sure you notate that the bolts, uh, some of them are longer, some of them are shorter, some are medium. So there's three different types over here, but I mean, for the most part, you're gonna know which way it goes. Once it stops, then you know that's the long one and it needs to go in the long one. So the long ones were kind of more towards here, the short ones are towards there. So for the most part, it's in. Uh, this thing needs to cure for a couple hours, so that's fine because I still gotta mount the exhaust on and all that other stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead, put everything back together, and then uh, we'll move to the top of the engine and we'll take a look at that screen for the uh, VVT solenoid. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do now that the car is sitting on the ground, I'm gonna let that oil pan just cure overnight because I don't need the car today, and the longer you let it cure, the better chance that you have that it won't leak. So let's give that a shot. Also, Honda Bond actually recommends almost, I think, what, 15, 16 hours? And this RTV says three to five hours. It's fine. We'll just let it go overnight. So this VVT solenoid has a little screen in there, and those do get clogged up. When I worked on this engine, this cylinder head right over here was kind of dirty, gross, a lot of junk in it. So there is a chance that it is clogged up. I don't have any codes, I don't have any issues, but I'm trying to make sure that I have adequate oil flow to kind of rule out that that is the issue with the ticking noise. If not, then we'll get a cylinder head. So to do this, uh, I think I just need to take out these wires for these coil packs, disconnect the EGR connector over here, the coolant sensor, along with these, and then I should be able to slide this out four bolts and this should come out pretty easy so let's give it a shot So it just kind of kind of let it hang right over here. I don't want to put too much tension, but it should be pretty good. And now this is gonna be hard to record, but I should be able to get to those bolts and pop this out. One, two, what do you think? One, two. Yeah, there's a bunch of bolts. So we'll just take them out one by one. These are 12s. All right, so now maybe this will come off. we found our problem and I don't know how well the camera zooms in on this uh, let's see if you look right over here and I'll try to put my finger right over there it looks like our gasket it looks like our screen broke and it's kind of blocking this yep yeah. that might be part of our ticking noise it might not but I do know this I need a gasket and this car ain't going anywhere anytime soon. So we got this off, we took this piece off over here and this is where that gasket is. This was all deformed and yeah, kind of messed up over here. Um, as far as dirt, it has a little bit of dirt in there but nothing too terrible. Let's see if we can get this gasket out. And this, if you have a, ever have a leak coming from the front, it's usually these. So yeah, this thing is a little way past its prime. It's got a lot of junk in it, which 
I got rid of most of it. This over here, this gasket is also toast. Yep, looks like we'll be going to the Honda dealer. So, we'll clean this up a little bit. I mean, other than that, don't look terrible. We'll put this thing back together, and in a couple of days we'll come back. Hopefully, I should have the gasket and and get this thing back together and running. It's a few days later and I actually got the gaskets in for the, well, dealership calls it the spool valve, VVT, whatever you decide to reference it. But we did get the gasket. So going to the dealer, apparently they don't sell the gaskets by itself, which totally sucks. They actually sell you the valve and the valve is like $236. Yeah, this valve works. I don't have any check engine lights. It's no issues with it so there's no reason for me to change it so got on Amazon and I'll post a link to it and I was actually able to get the spool valve gasket for like $12 uh, some mixed reviews on it and I found this one and this one seems to be decent for the most part in the fact that it fits good this is the one part of the gasket it fits pretty good um, it's not flat so happy with that and then you have this one which has the screen on it which in our case our screen was kind of broken squashed in and had a little bit of junk in it so we're pretty good on that now let's go ahead let's go to the vehicle let's install these gaskets fire it up and hope for the best so the gasket with the screen goes in right over here let's kind of press it in little by little hopefully it fits fine with no issues like i said a lot of mixed reviews on buying these aftermarket gaskets but if that's the only option you have now rock auto does sell it but they are on back order unavailable, so you gotta do what you have. I mean, hopefully it don't leak, but if it does, at least I could at least get the vehicle moving until we're able to decide what's the best option for. Um, I have seen them on eBay, so that is another option to consider. I know the lighting is pretty bad, but the best advice I could give is, is just kind of push it into the grooves as best as you can. Let it sit. Um, kind of sitting a little wonky right over here with the uh, screen right over there. As you can see, it's just, I'm not sure why it's doing that, but I'll make it work. Now this part over here, this plate, when you take it off, you're actually going to have a lot of gasket material on it. So the best recommendation that I have found is to clean it, take a Scotch-Brite pad, and make sure you get all that excess gasket material off. Now this goes in only one way, and it actually has these little dowels. I don't know if you can see it right over here. Um, this one, I lost it, but from what I'm reading, it's not the end of the world. It's kind of just to help it sit in place and keep it from falling, so... That's fine. We got the one on the bottom, which should work good. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and just push this down a little bit. All right. This top one takes the longer bolt. The two bottom ones, which are right over here behind this uh, sensor right over here. They're the smaller ones. I'm going to go ahead and snug these down. Don't go too crazy with them because, I mean, it is aluminum. You don't want to strip it, and you do really don't want to take a chance of breaking the gasket. The key to remember for this right over here is to make sure that that gasket is sitting in the grooves. If it's sitting in the grooves like we did and we double check, then when you tighten it, you shouldn't break the gasket. I have read that people don't seat it properly, and when they tighten it, it breaks the gasket, which creates leak and other issues. All right, well... Seems to be working. So far, sounds good. I don't see oil pouring out of this VVT solenoid. Let's take a look underneath.
I don't see no drips or anything over here, so let me let this thing run for a little bit and I'll give a final update. To wrap up this video, how's it performing? Well, it runs great. The noise is a lot quieter. I think there's just some wear for some neglect that this vehicle experienced it in its lifetime. It's not leaking. I've already done a couple of miles on it, ran it, drove it a little hard, and um, yeah, definitely happy with that. So, hope you guys found this video entertaining and useful. Thanks for watching. We'll see what we fix next.